In this lecture, presented by www.free-academy.com, we're going to continue learning how to analyze functions by going into the second derivative test. Now, in the uh, first lecture of this section, we did the first derivative test, which is where we took the derivative of a function and then found out through whether the first derivative was positive or negative for a given range, whether the function was increasing or decreasing. And what I've drawn out here is the absolute value function, which is something you should be pretty familiar with. If you take the first derivative of it, you find that it's negative 1 for x less than 0, and it's positive 1 for x greater than 0. So you're switching from a decreasing to an increasing, so you know that there has to be a minimum at x equals 0. And that x equals 0 also has to be a critical point. All right, that's all review so far. But is there something more about this that you can tell? Can you tell anything from finding the second derivatives? Well, actually, there is something that you can tell from them. This particular function doesn't tell us much of anything. The second derivatives are 0. So the rate of change of the rate of change is 0. So the rate of change is not changing. And basically, what that means is we have straight lines for the function. If the second derivative is equal to 0, then you have a straight line. This is something you already know. So let's take off this absolute value function and let's bring in our friendly parabola. We can find the first derivative of our parabola. So that's f prime of x is equal to 2x. We know that we have a critical point at x equals 0. And from setting up our table, we know that we have a negative before 0, positive after 0. So it's decreasing for x less than 0. And it's increasing for x greater than 0, which means we have a minimum at x equals 0. But there's another way that we could have told that we have a minimum here. If we find the second derivative, f double prime of x, we get 2 we get positive 2. So that means the rate of change of our derivative is increasing, so we get a curved line out of this. So before, when we had no change in our first derivative, we had a straight line. When you do have change in your derivative, you have a curved line. And additionally, our f double prime of 2 equals 2, we have a curve in the part of this function and it's decreasing. When it's decreasing and it has a positive second derivative, it's becoming less and less steep. Whereas if it's increasing and you have a positive second derivative, it becomes more and more steep. So that's about as much as we can learn from our second derivative on this parabola. Let's go and do the function x equals or f of x equals x to the third. So here we have our function f of x equals x to the third, and I've already done a lot of the legwork on the first derivative test. I found the first derivative. I found that the critical point occurs at x equals 0. I did the ranges from negative infinity to the first critical point, from the last critical point to positive infinity. I put in some test values in those ranges, but then I got an odd result. I got that we are increasing from negative infinity to 0 and from 0 to positive infinity. So what's going on at this critical point here? Well, that's something that can be determined from finding the second derivative and doing the second derivative test. Our second derivative is equal to 6x. So we have another critical point at x equals 0. So now that we know that this point is occurring at x equals 0, let's set up another table for the second derivative, just like we did for the first derivative. And this is our second derivative test. So we'll take the value negative 1 and positive 1 again. And if we put that in, we get negative 6 and positive 6 out. So we have a negative and from negative infinity to 0 and a positive from 0 to positive infinity, what does this tell you? Well, the negative tells you that the function is what's called concave down. 
and the positive means that the function is concave up. But what do these terms mean? Well, if they're concave, that means there's a curvature. And if it's concave down, it means that it's curving downwards. And if it's concave up, it's curving upwards. And let's take a look at our graph here. This is exactly what we observe. From negative infinity to zero, this function is curving into a downward direction. And from zero to positive infinity, it's curving in an upward direction. One thing that um, a lot of teachers like to say, that if a function is concave up, that means it holds water. And if the function were concave down, that means it would spill water. So it's kind of like a cup. It's curving. It's like a cup. And when we have a situation where we switch from concave up to concave down or from concave up or from concave down to concave up, that's what we have called an inflection point. So our critical point that occurred at x equals 0, it wasn't a minimum and it wasn't a maximum. It was an inflection point. We switched from concave down to concave up. Now let's uh, clear all that and let's bring up our parabola again really quick. And this time, let's not do the first derivative test. Excuse me, I miswrote this here. f of x is equal to 2x, or x squared. Let's not do the first derivative test. Let's go straight to the second derivative test. f double prime of x is equal to 2. So we have positive 2 in the second derivative. That means our function is concave up from negative infinity to positive infinity. And then we know from the first derivative that we have a critical point. At x equals 0. So without taking any intervals and without testing anything, if we know that we are concave up on a particular interval, and we know that we have one critical point inside that interval, that we must have a minimum. And I would encourage you to try to construct a function where that's not true. Try to take any graph and show that it's not true, because you won't be able to. It must be that way except for odd exceptions with asymptotes and things of that nature, which we cover later. And conversely, if we have one critical point on a function in a range that we know has to be concave down, that that point must be a maximum. And if we have a critical point from where we go from concave down to concave up, that must be an inflection point. And by knowing things about where our minimums and maximums occur, where we have concavity and inflection points, we can actually do a really good job of sketching graphs without using a calculator. And in fact, it's uh, something they're going to make you do a lot in calculus. So we'll do lots of practice problems, and we'll even cover the uh, cases where we have asymptotes and other odd behaviors. So that's it for the second derivative test.